this is our final day of new information. Weird to think about. Um, so I wanted to just go through the timeline of the universe from the beginning to now and to what we think is going to happen. Um, now, of course, all of this is based off of what we know now. Um, and a lot of this stuff is currently being worked on uh, through research and other things. So this could very well change. And there's a lot of extra theories. And for example, <clears throat> um, what I'm going to go through is basically what is generally accepted, but maybe there's like other, there's certainly other theories about different points in time about, oh, this thing happened this time. No, oh, this thing happened this other time, right? So I'm giving you sort of what is generally accepted now to be the answer. But of course, this could very well change as we learn more things. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but your warm up question is just, what is the age of the universe? How old is it? Um, I believe I have said this before, but if you don't remember, then take a guess. Uh, and here's your hint. Uh, well, it has to be older than the age of the Earth. And hopefully you may remember what the age of the Earth is. Again, if you don't remember that either, well, then again, just guess. <laughs> Try to figure it out. So, uh, the universe is approximately... This again, as far as we know, 13.8 billion years old. That's what we think the age of the universe is. Um, now, the Earth's been around for mm, about a third of that, I think. Earth's about four and a half. So here, let me uh, do some quick math. 4.5 divided by 13.8. Yeah, about a third, a little bit less than a third. 1546 according to my phone calculator. Great, okay, thank you. Um, which, hey, 1545ths would be a third, so yeah, pretty dang close. Um, which might be kind of surprising. I don't know, I might think that, like, the Earth being around for a third of the universe is... I don't know, it seems like that's kind of a long amount of time. You'd think it'd be less than that, but yeah, that's about what we think it is. So, uh, I'm going to start from the beginning and just go from there. Um, a lot of terminology here you might not be familiar with. I'll try to explain everything as much as I can. Um, but, of course, every single little piece of information here can go into its own topic of conversation. So, yeah. Um, if you want to look more into this, there's, like, uh, there... What is it? Is it, like, a Wikipedia article that's on, like... There's definitely, like, timeline stuff of, like, on Wikipedia of Wikipedia articles for, like, timeline of the universe or something. So if you want to look into that, um, that's uh, more information you can get there. You can also get, like, Timeline of the Earth and other things as well. I don't know. I always, I've, I've looked at those articles before and kind of read through them, and I don't know, I find them interesting. Um, yeah, so let's start with, well, kind of the beginning. Um, oh, let me... Okay. So, uh, basically, again, this is saying that everything I've written down here is kind of from our basic understanding, uh, particularly of dark matter and dark energy. So I've talked about these a little bit, but not a ton, so let me clarify. So dark matter is some sort of matter so it has mass okay it exudes some sort of gravity that we know exists but we can't see it and we know it exists because we can sort of measure like okay based on the size of this galaxy it needs x amount of gravity in order to like have that shape however if you actually count the number of stars and stuff in the galaxy that we can see and i mean of course you can't count every single one but you can sort of figure it out based on light and stuff um we don't get anywhere near what number we actually need so we need something like four or five times more matter than we actually see to have gravity like work. So that's the sense of like, okay, there's a bunch more matter out there that we don't understand, but it has some mass. It's something, it just doesn't, doesn't emit any light. So that's why it's dark matter. So that's the idea behind that. Dark energy is sort of this latent energy in empty space, as far as we know. And again, what we know is very, very little. So it is something that is causing the universe to expand um and we think also accelerate in its expansion so um the thing with the dark energy is that for example if you have if the universe is expanding the density of matter and energy normally in the universe is going to go down right it's sort of like you fill up 
like a, a, a an aquarium with like a certain amount of water, and then if you suddenly somehow like made the aquarium twice as big, well, the amount of water is like the same. So therefore, the height of the water in the aquarium is now lower, right? It's been spread out more. So in other words, the density of matter, the density of energy in the universe goes down as the universe expands. The thing is, that's not what happens with dark energy. Dark energy, it would be like, again, let's say you fill the tank halfway, and then you somehow like double the size of the tank, but then the tank is still half full. That's what dark energy is doing. So that's why the idea is that it's energy of empty space, because by expanding space, you're sort of adding more space, which means you're adding more dark energy. So the density of dark energy is constant. So that's a weird thing, and there's things that kind of come from that. Namely, um, well, I'll talk about that later, so when we get to it. So, yeah. But again, we understand very little about dark matter, and we understand even less about dark energy. So based off of those ideas, this could, of course, very much change uh, what we think will happen and what we think has happened. But we are going to start at time t equals zero. Let me... Yeah, that's the full thing. So this is the Big Bang. Now, um, of course, it is like people like to point out, especially like uh, creationists or whatever, say so like, oh, you don't know what caused it. It's like, yeah, we don't. <laughs> so we don't um um there's an idea that you know it was literally caused by like a parallel universe smacking into us uh but other ideas that basically uh sort of is that uh, there was a black hole that kind of created out of another universe and sort of anything that uh that the that fell into the black hole in this other universe kind of came into ours we don't know we do not know what caused the big bang the idea is that before the Big Bang, the universe was an infinitely small point that has like infinite density, it's infinite temperature, all this kind of crazy stuff. Um, now, it's not like an explosion exactly, it's more so space itself, space and time itself like expanded. <laughs> okay, so because an explosion implies that like stuff, exp stuff expanded within space, where this is saying no, space itself got bigger. <laughs> so, um, and this is sort of, again, you have a theoretical, like, theory of everything. The idea of a theor theory of everything is kind of the combining of quantum mechanics with general relativity, um, specifically when talking about the four fundamental forces of gravity, electromagnetism, strong nuclear, and weak nuclear. It's sort of saying all of those were together as, like, one thing. This is all very, very theoretical. We don't have, we don't have this, okay? We don't know what this looks like at all. We just, it's sort of the idea of if we were to figure out how to combine general relativity and quantum mechanics, we could maybe figure things out and maybe figure this out, put things together. So, um, yeah. So, and while th the thing is, though, is that when this first, even when this first started expanding, it was not 100% even okay the temperature was a little bit hotter and colder in certain places and the density is a little bit hotter bigger and smaller in some places of course at this point the universe is like you know smaller than like a than an atom <laughs> but yeah so you end up getting some kind of ridiculous uh and they get the, the tiny amount of, but the point is it's not perfectly even if it was perfectly even then the idea is that like, well once the universe expands out to as big as it is now, that means it would still be perfectly even in everything, which it's not, right? So that's sort of the idea behind that. So that's time zero. So now we're going to switch to time 10 to the minus 43 seconds. <laughs> so at this idea, we think this is when sort of gravity is sort of as, as a force splits off from the others. And there's are kind of referred as the electronuclear force because that's electricity, the electromagnetism, strong nuclear and weak nuclear forces. Um, so this is the idea of called the Grand Unified Theory. Again, it's combining the electromagnetism with strong nuclear and weak nuclear forces. This we have some math for because it is, again, like, these all three of those forces are based in quantum mechanics while gravity is not. So this is sort of, like, as early as we can go with actual math that, like, makes sense, quote-unquote, but even then it's, like, barely makes sense. So, and this is the idea about how, like, oh, gravity was, you know, this is when gravity sort of, like, became a thing. Um, but we don't even really know, like, you know, what this really means in terms of, like, what things look like. Again, this still, this point, the universe is still, like, tinier than, you know, an electron, and, uh, it's, you know, 10 to the 32 degrees Kelvin, um, so, unbelievably hot and unbelievably tiny, um, but gravity is now its own thing, so, right. <laughs> Uh, then we get to 10 to the minus uh, 36 seconds. Uh, universe is a little bit cooler. It's now 10 to the 28 Kelvin. Um, 
Now we think this is when the strong nuclear force splits off from what we know as the electro-weak force. Um, and this is when we think like some base particles like Higgs bosons start to appear. But even then, like quarks, not a thing yet. Electrons, not a thing yet. So, but we just might start getting some sort of particles as a thing. Um, so, yeah. So then we have 10 to the negative 33 seconds. Um, this is... This is when inflation starts. So this is something that's actually been fairly recent in the last few decades, time understood. And basically, the universe expands by a factor of 10 to the 26 in only 10 to the minus 32 seconds. Okay, so starting at this point and, exp and lasting for, you know, again, a uh, whatever that is, a billionth of a second is 10 to the minus 9. So, uh, like, a trillionth of a trillionth of a billionth of a second something like that um it expands by this much <laughs> and so that's like and it's something like the universe went from like sub sub subatomic size to like tennis ball size okay so that's how big this this happened and there isn't really a great idea as to why the main thing that people think of is that like well right before this the strong nuclear force split off from the electro weak force so maybe that has something to do with it but we don't really know why this happened um um, and the reason why that we think this happened to, to begin with is that, again, based off of what we know about, you know, how in the very beginning of the universe was like almost, almost, almost perfectly even, but not quite, is that if that expanded just kind of normally without this sort of inflation time, um, it, that sort of very, that tiny, tiny, tiny bit of variation doesn't line up with what we actually see right now. So it has to do with that. Um, but inflationary theory is really complicated and it's very new. So yeah, um, still kind of a thing. And again, universe is now uh, 10 to the 22 Kelvin. So, you know, reasonable day. Uh, again, here we have 10 to the 32 seconds. So inflation ends. So, you know, very, 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 very short amount of time and the universe is now macroscopic. It is, again, at this point, the universe is like, tennis kind of tennis ball basketball size so that kind of range so that's kind of neat um this is when we think quarks start to appear um and also uh dark matter probably as well um so then we get to 10 to the minus 12 seconds and this is when electromagnetism is now separate from the weak nuclear force so now we have all four fundamental forces existing as they are uh normally so this is when things start to make more sense okay this is when it's like okay we have the forces we have uh, quarks um, and some other elementary particles. We have actual, we have matter, we have energy, we have the different forces. We're kind of actually getting to things where things make more sense. So this is kind of another milestone about like how I said um, earlier with, uh, let's see. So we have kind of like these times where the forces split apart. So like 10 to the minus 12, everything after 10 to the minus 12 seconds, we're pretty confident that we think we knew how things were going. Between 10 to the minus 12 and, like, 10 to the minus 36 here, when the strong nuclear force split, this is, like, again, fairly recently we now just think, like, okay, we think we kind of get how inflation works, but we're not that, we're not 100% certain on things, but we're fairly confident. Uh, before that, when you had the, uh, yeah, the gravity split, so here, 10 to the 30, minus 36, 10 to the minus 43, this is, like, we have something, sort of, but we don't really know how it works, and then, like, before that, when they were all together, we had, like, no idea. So it's very much, like, those kind of mark our sort of boundaries of understanding. Um, but, yeah, so now we're at 10 to the minus 12. Um, but, again, we don't have any... We don't have atoms. We don't have, like, electrons or even protons or anything. We still have quarks by themselves. Um, and, yeah, but this is when things start to make a little bit more sense. And now the universe is only uh, a quadrillion degrees. So that's fun. Uh, 10 to the minus 6 seconds, so we're at a millionth of a second has passed now, so the universe began, um, and the universe is now 10 billion degrees. Um, at this point, quarks uh, can now start to combine to form protons and neutrons, because before, um, it was just so hot that quarks were just, they were all just zooming around so quickly that they just could not combine into each other to make bigger particles. They just would move too quickly and have too much energy to do that. Um, this moves on to 1 second. So one second has passed since the beginning of the universe. Um, the universe is now a billion degrees. And this is when, again, we've actually had some protons and neutrons form. Also, antiprotons and antineutrons and antiquarks and all that stuff, those are all like, also existing at this time. And we think that uh, through the fact that these were colliding, 
um, a lot. These collisions produced the first sort of electrons and muons and those kind of things. Um, one, now, one thing it kind of talked about is, like, why is the universe, like, all matter? Why do we see it as all of this matter? And um, because, you know, what's the... W there's no real reason that, like, we have more matter than antimatter. There's no real, like, reason for that. Now, um... And the whole sense, then, since when matter and, and antimatter touch each other, you get giant bursts of energy. Um, so, if there was, like, a bunch of antimatter out in the universe, we should probably be able to see that energy, and we don't. So... Um, it seems like the universe, vast, vast majority of it is matter. So the question is sort of like, where did the antimatter go? Um, and also, if if the universe started out as a hundred as a perfectly 50-50 split between matter and antimatter, then all of it will have like collided and annihilated each other, and then we'd have nothing left. So there must have been some sort of imbalance early on that we just don't understand why. So apparently I remember seeing that there was something about how like someone did some like uh, model calculations and found that like the early universe may have been like 55% matter and 45% antimatter. And that all matter that's left is basically that like 10% difference. <laughs> so maybe, um, which means there used to have been a lot more matter around, um, but we don't, you know, we don't really know. Um, but yeah, this is when we start getting one second. Uh, uh, the universe is one second old, then we're now getting to some electrons. Again, the universe is expanding, by the way, through all of this. So I don't know how big the universe is at this point, but it is expanding throughout all of this. Um, Let's see, how long is this? Okay, so 10 seconds in. So at this point, um, we're having, again, all these collisions, they're all producing energy in the form of light. So light is being produced a lot in all of these collisions. And in fact, there's so much collisions going on that actually, if you were to basically count all of the energy from light versus all of the energy just from like matter existing, because again, R equals mc squared, right? So if you have a mass of things, you have a lot of energy associated with that. But even with that, there was more energy in light at this point in the universe than uh, from matter, regular or dark matter. So um, through something that's very complicated, I don't want to get into, it has to do with uh, how energy, how, what type of energy is dominant in the universe. Having light be actually your dominant form of energy in the universe, it slows down your acceleration, uh, your expansion of the universe by kind of a lot. Um, so the universe was still accelerate, was still, uh, expanding, but it was slowing down in its expansion at this time. So, yeah. Um, something interesting about that. Again, I'm not sure the exact size at the moment, but yeah. Um, and interesting also is that since there's all of these, uh, protons and electrons, they're all, they're all charged particles, all these charged particles everywhere. Um, light is sort of trapped because again, light kind of gets like, uh, affected by charged particles. So even though there's all this light everywhere, it's you wouldn't be able to see it because it's all stuck basically light is all stuck and kind of bound by all these electrical charges and so um you have this sort of fog of light if that makes any sense which it doesn't really but it's kind of the description of it um also gravity is again gravity has been here for all this time well all of this time 10 seconds but because it's a weaker force and it usually works over larger distances it takes longer for things to really feel the effect of gravity. So at this point, things, especially things like dark matter, which don't have an electric charge, they sort of start to feel gravity and sort of they start to sort of clump together until like here's kind of a little bit more dense piece, here's a little bit of a less dense piece. That kind of starts to really be felt around this time. Okay, we're going to jump ahead three minutes. Uh, three minutes, we actually start to get something that's interesting called... Uh, I've heard nucleosynthesis, also nuclear recombination, which is not a great term because recombination sounds like, you know, it used to be combined and then it wasn't and now it's being combined again. That's not really what's happening. Basically, this is when we actually start to get atoms. So the protons and the electrons and also the neutrons, they actually, it's now cool enough so that again, because just like how I said, the quarks were too hot to sort of combine. Again, at this point, at this point, the electrons and the protons were also too hot um, to combine either. But now it's cool enough so that things start to happen. Okay, so we start to get hydrogen, and then we do get a little bit of fusion going on. We get, uh, he, he, so, you know, hydrogen fuses to helium. A little bit of lithium is made, and also some deuterium. Deuterium is the, um, it's the hydrogen isotope that also has the one neutron. So deuterium is one proton, one neutron, one electron. So you're starting to get actual atoms now at three minutes in. Uh, going into 20 minutes, so now it's too cold for fusion. So remember, fusion, for fusion to happen, you have to have a pretty hot temperature. Um, they had 17 minutes where fusion could occur, um, but now, no. Uh, so in terms of atoms, though, we now have 
the universe it's about 75 percent hydrogen 25 percent helium and a very very tiny amount of lithium like you know less than one percent um but again this is all um Oh, it's all ionized. So again, why I said electron is not true. But uh, the protons and the neutrons would kind of come together. So we had, um, so yeah, we had helium nuclei, lithium nuclei. Those are all created. I guess hydrogen nuclei is basically just protons. So I guess it doesn't too much. But you did have nuclear fusion actually come occurring and that stuff happening. Um, but yeah, there is. It's everything is still ionized. So the electrons are still flying all over the place. Um, they're not connected to any of the atoms at this point. Well, the nu the nucleus at this point. And then we're going to jump to, uh, that's kilo years. So in other words, this is 70,000 years. So from 20 minutes to 70,000 years. Um, at this point, um, uh, the universe has been expanding and uh, at this whole time. And again, since light was the dominant force of energy in the universe, that expansion has been slowing down. However, also from this, um, as you expand your energy of your light decreases okay because think about how like remember how light the energy of light corresponded to the frequency of the light or in other words the inverse of the wavelength so if you stretch space you're also stretching the light so you're increasing the wavelength of light so as space gets bigger the energy of light goes down and the density goes down as well so it's like kind of like doubly decreasing that matter doesn't do that it just goes down because density you know the volume gets bigger so uh, at this point, 70,000 years ago, or no, 70,000 years, when the universe is 70,000 years old, this is when now the e equals mc squared, the energy from matter, is now more than the energy from light. So at this point, the universe switches from being radiation dominated to matter dominated. So when this happens, the universe is still slowing down, but it's not slowing down by quite as much. So it's like, you're st they're still putting the brake on, but it's not like slamming the brake on. I mean, slamming is kind of not the right term, because again, it was not that much different, but it's a bit different. Again, this is the whole thing based on cosmology and um, critical densities and crap. It's very, very complicated. I'm not going to get into it fully, but um, yeah. So just know that the universe at 70,000 years old is now matter dominated, not radiation dominated. It is still decreasing in its expansion though, but it's still expanding. So, and yeah. Then we're going to jump further to about 370,000 years. So three, when the universe is 370,000 years old, let me get out there, um, this is, at this point, the universe is now about 3,000 Kelvin. And at this point, the electrons can now finally get combined with the atomic nuclei. So we now finally have normal, regular atoms with protons, neutrons, and electrons. And when this happens, all of a sudden, all of this electric charge that have been zooming all over the place, that now stops because it's all kind of connected now with the atoms. And so all the light that had been bouncing around, getting trapped by all this electric charge, that finally escapes. It escapes and it spreads out just in a kind of a straight line without changing. And this light has been spreading throughout the universe throughout all of its time. Okay, through all the time that it's existed. And so I've mentioned this story before, but the whole thing about how like we can we have detected you know light signals from empty space. It was these microwave signals. And what we're determined to be was that these this was the light that sort of escaped from the early universe when it was 370,000 years old. And this light is known as the cosmic microwave background. So this is one of the very first pieces of evidence, like actual tangible evidence that we had to the birth of the universe and any of this stuff even happening. And so you probably maybe have seen this. It's this kind of image here. So the idea is that I think it's that uh, the red is the slightly more dense parts and the blue is the slightly less dense parts. So in other words... This kind of shows that, hey, this is sort of the light from the early universe that we can detect, and we can see it's not perfectly even, right? Some parts, there's a bit more energy, some parts is a bit less energy. And this corresponds to places in the universe where there is like a bit more stuff versus a bit less stuff. And so that's kind of a, a thing about that that is very important. So, yeah. So at this point now, the universe, you can actually, you know, we have matter, we have light that's actually, we have, we have actual atoms, and we have light that has now escaped into the universe, it continues expanding and going from there. Um, yeah. And now we're going to jump from 370,000 years old to 100 million years old. So we've jumped, definitely jumped, jumped up pretty far here. Um, at this point, again, matter, gravity has been constantly working slowly in the background, and um, at this point, about 100 million years old, this is when we think the first stars started to appear. Um, where you actually have enough matter concentrated in, in a small enough space 
that you sort of create your first stars. Now, these first stars we think were very large, very bright, and died very quickly. Um, also, partly because, again, the only atoms that were really around were hydrogen, helium, and the tiny bit of lithium. So, but that was all caused by just the whole 17 minutes of fusion in the very early universe. But now we have stars. Granted, these stars might not have even lived a million years. They might have lived like a few thousand years. But a few thousand years is longer than 17 minutes. So they have nuclear fusion going. And also, since they're really, really big stars, they can definitely fuse all the way to iron. So from this, we start getting actual uh, heavier metals in terms of atoms, so we start getting, you know, carbon and oxygen and neon and nitrogen. Those sort of elements end up actually being created by these early stars. And then once these stars supernova, they end up spewing those metals out into the universe. And also from the supernova explosion, you can fuse past iron and go all the way to like uranium, actually. So this is sort of the first sort of um, the first sort of bit of getting heavier elements, heavier than, you know, the first three into the universe from these uh, biggest stars. Now again, once these truly giant stars explode and they leave their cl clouds of dust behind, then those clouds of dust will also sort of collapse and coalesce into other stars as well. And usually they'll be kind of smaller stars from that um, that'll last longer. And they will also, since the star, you know, spewed some like oxygen and, st and carbon, you know, with out with them, those will be a part of the newer of the stars that form later. So basically you have these sort of generations of stars where each successive one you go, you end up with stars with more and more kind of metal metal stuff inside of them. Um, so that's kind of how this sort of started with this. Uh, jumping up to about 200 million years. Um, this is when we think, you know, okay, again, gravity's been slowly working this whole time, so we have our own stars, and hey, if there's a star that's kind of close to another star, they might get connected, and hey, if there's, well, not like connected, connected, but, you know, gravitationally bound to each other, then maybe there you have this cluster of stars, and hey, the, because you have these truly giant stars that explode, they might form some black holes, and then you get stars moving around the black holes, and eventually you start getting actual galaxies, sort of large collections of stars that are gravitationally bound to each other. Um, and we think about 600, when the universe was about 600 million years old, the Milky Way kind of first started to form from that. So, yeah. Um, 700 million years old. At uh, this point, now we have had galaxies for a while, but we think the galaxies start sort of moving and interacting with each other and colliding with each other. And when that happens, um, you end up forming larger galaxies or they get these galactic halos which sort of seem to kind of be this like weird kind of shell around a galaxy that's interesting can happen and you know basically the bigger galaxies can eat up the smaller galaxies and therefore can bigger themselves you get these sort of large again uh changes over a large scale uh so the the g remember that's a giga years that's a billion years this is one billion years the universe is a billion years old and it starts looking like what it is you have galaxies that are full of stars that are going through nuclear fusion and as they explode they spew their heavier elements out into space and since at this point we've actually had you know we've had several hundred million years of stars uh creating heavier elements so this is when we think the first planets may have started to form because you actually have elements that are not just you know hydrogen um and they're enough to actually form some planets at the beginning though it's going to be pretty much just gas planets because sure we have some like iron and stuff but again not very much so um and again the galaxies now that you have galaxies working with each other they also kind of form into larger structures called gal galaxy clusters so that's kind of how that works in there and then the galactic clusters start forming into galactic superclusters. so basically the big scale structures of the universe start to form very slowly over this time through interactions of gravity um and then about 4 billion years old this is when andromeda and the milky way galaxies start to move towards each other so again this collision of the Andromeda and Milky Way galaxies has been going on for a very long time. Um, at 5 billion years old, this is when we think there's enough heavy elements to start getting rocky planets to appear around other stars. Um, just because now we've had enough, you know, like calcium, iron, uh, whatever other rocky elements there are. Um, this is when we think it's again the universe about 5 billion years old. Um, here, universe is about 6 billion years old. Um, again, we have, of course, the galactic superclusters, but we think that they start to form galactic walls and galactic filaments. These are, again, the idea of just gravity interacting with even bigger and bigger objects to form things. Um, the whole thing about these is that, like, galaxies 
the galaxy superclusters are not like evenly distributed. There's sort of these regions or these like these like fill, think like strings almost of like ga galactic clusters that are sort of lined up, and then a wall is sort of like a two dimensional plane of all these galaxy clusters kind of lined up with each other. But then there's also these voids, these regions of space with like you know many millions of light years across that have like almost nothing in them and so you get these sort of very very large scale structures um but again as you also see there is some idea that these could have formed earlier um this stuff is not very well understood and we get to the truly biggest kind of things that we see moving on to uh, about 7.8 billion years old um this is a kind of interesting point so again through all this time the universe has been expanding um and so there is expansion, again, the density of energy from matter has been going down. Again, the whole, you know, fill up part of the fish tank, expand the fish tank, the water level is now lower. But again, throughout all of this, dark energy has been this constant amount as the universe expands. So at this point, when the universe is about 7.8 billion years old, this is when the energy from matter, which has been constantly decreasing, now drops below that constant value that is the dark energy. And when this happens, this is now, we're now shifting. And before, at the very beginning, we were shift, we shifted from uh, radiation to matter. That kept the universe decelerating, but it was not decelerating quite as much. Here, this shift, again, this has to do with the fact that the density is constant with dark energy. When you shift from dark matter, to, or well, any matter, when you shift from matter to dark energy, all of a sudden, the universe now starts accelerating in its expansion. And so this is, again, a weird thing that happens. We don't really understand why that this exactly relates to each other, but it does. So the universe is now accelerating. Uh, 9.2 billion years old. This is when the solar system forms, so our sun kind of forms. Um, and we think then about when the universe is 9.8 billion years old. This is when we think that the earliest forms of life on Earth might have uh, shown up. Um, 11.2 billion years old, modern bacteria. This is the idea of like photosynthetic bacteria that actually kind of, you know, seem to function like normal, quote unquote. And 13.2 billion years old, we have first multicellular organisms. And then 13.8 billion years old is present day. So right now, um, what are we at? Well, the universe right now, of course, it is accelerating. It's getting bigger and bigger. Um, stars are still forming. They're going through their life cycles, they're still, nuclear fusion still happening, um, and planets and stars just are kind of doing their things. Um, now the question, of course, is then what's going to happen in the future? Now something you may notice is that the time scale here has been increasing as we go along. So, again, going back to the very beginning, a lot of stuff was happening in like the tiniest fractions of seconds, right? And then we got to like, oh, one second, 10 seconds, three minutes, 20 minutes. But then we got to, you know, here, then stuff started happening over thousands of years and then started happening over hundreds of millions of years, then started happening over billions of years, right? So the time scale is, key, is still increasing as we go forward. That's going to keep continuing. So the time scale of the universe is going to get larger and larger and larger. And, if, and you're going to end up with, hey, the universe kind of stays the same for like quadrillions of years before something else happens even in like our best theories. But anyway, so theories about what's going to happen at the end of the universe. There's four main theories and they're all based off of um, how much dark energy there is. And if, if the dark energy somehow changes and we don't fully understand it, um, because again, the dark energy controls the expansion of the universe that sort of affects this. So here are the four main theories, what we think will happen. The first is known as the big freeze, also known as heat death. Um, all of these are generally referred to as big something, um, to kind of go with the big bang sort of. Um, so the big freeze is that the universe just kind of keeps expanding and it just keeps going and eventually stars stop forming and the stars kind of die and matter just sort of decays away after a very, very long period of time. And eventually you're just kind of left with nothing and that's it. <laughs> it's the it's the sad depressing uh one basically of just everything just could turns into nothing and it just lasts for nothing forever um and unfortunately this is what we think will actually happen <laughs> so based on dark energy right now this is what will happen which is mm, probably kind of depressing um but that's what we think will happen again you know things could change or knowledge could change but this is what we know is for now now uh this name's kind of fun the big rip this is if dark energy somehow gets stronger um, in which case the, the acceleration will get even faster. And the idea is that if, if the acceleration gets faster and faster, eventually you will have space expanding so fast that like 
you know, it'll sort of break galaxies apart because the space between all the stars will be expanding faster than like gravity can actually keep them together. Then uh, stars will not be able to hold themselves together. So literally the space within a star will be expanding faster than the gravity can hold it in. So stars will explode. Then the planets will not be able to hold together as well and they'll explode. And then our own bodies will not be able to, you know, last. They won't be able to hold themselves together because the space inside of our bodies is expanding so fast. So, and then it keeps going all the way down until atoms and subatomic particles literally rip themselves apart because space is expanding so stupidly fast. The universe literally tears itself apart, okay? Think of it as, like, you know, someone blew the balloon up too fast and it popped, right? That could happen. Um, again, currently, that's not going to happen, but if dark energy somehow gets stronger or whatever, then it could theoretically happen, so... Um, next up is the big crunch. This is sort of the opposite. So this is that it's what if dark energy somehow gets weaker over time, then the, ex again, space will keep expanding, but eventually it will slow down and eventually it will stop. Okay. And at this point, then you have, what do you have? You have a universe that's full of matter. Matter has gravity. So then gravity will sort of collapse everything back down and it'll be sort of this crunch where everything will return back to that sort of singularity from the beginning. Um, this was actually kind of an issue when Einstein was first dealing with general relativity because he sort of was like, well, wait a minute. If gravity works the way I say it does, then this should happen. And he's like, well, but it's it's not happening. The universe is not shrinking in on itself. So therefore, he sort of made up, oh, there's this extra energy that's keeping everything apart. Um, and the reason he thought of that was because he thought at the time, he thought the universe was immortal. He thought everyone, the general thought at Einstein's time was that the universe just ex has existed this way forever. So he was like, well, if gravity would pull everything inwards, we need this kind of extra energy to keep everything, you know, from moving inwards. Um, but then later they figured out this stuff about the big bang and, you know, the cosmic microwave background, the expansion of the universe. And he was like, oh, okay, well then I don't need this sort of extra energy because, you know, sure, the universe is expanding right now, but, you know, it's like leftover, that's leftover energy from that Big Bang, and it's kind of pushing it outward, and gravity will eventually pull everything back down, and it will eventually collapse. That was the accepted thought for kind of the middle of the 1900s. Um, but then, they discovered the thing about dark energy, and how the universe is actually accelerating. And then they're like, oh, this doesn't work. So they basically had to take back the thing that Einstein, again, Einstein's whole thing about, oh, we need some extra energy to balance out gravity. They basically had to go back to that and were like, actually, Einstein, that thing that you made up that you thought was just kind of bullcrap and actually not real, that actually is real. <laughs> so they brought it back and then they were like, okay, um, yeah, so that's this whole thing about dark energy. So that's kind of a fun little thing with that. Um, but yeah. Oh, and then to go on with the big crunch, this is sort of an extra kind of thing, but that is something that's referred to as the big bounce. And this is sort of that, like, sh once the universe has sort of collapsed back on itself, it will then sort of bounce back with a new big bang, and there will be sort of this, like, cycle of the universe where there's a big bang, and it expands outward, and then it eventually will kind of collapse in back on itself, and then it will come back in and expand outward, and have this sort of cycle of universes growing and expanding and then collapsing and, you know, keep going for that, and ideally that would last forever. Um, it's a nice thought. It's the ni it's kind of the nicest idea is that the universe has this sort of cycle to it. Um, but it's not the one that currently we think is going to happen. Again, we think the one that's going to happen is the depressing one. So, sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't really have much more to say about that. Um, well, the thing is, I do have a lot, much more, a lot more to say about that. But you probably don't want to uh, have me just go through another kind of list of stuff for you. It'd be much better to be a better demonstration of this. So... I'm, uh, I'm going to be linking in the classroom post, there is a second video that I want you to look at. And this video actually will lead you to answer the wrap-up question. Um, the wrap-up question is here. Describe what we think will ultimately happen to black holes. So, I'm not going to tell you this answer. Um, you have to figure it out by watching the video. Now the video, um, which I have linked to, is this one here. Uh, Time Lapse of the Future, um, made by Melody Sheep. Um, I I may say this may be my favorite video on YouTube, period. Um, which is like such like a science teacher answer because, yo, it's a space educational video. But like, it's so well made um, artistically that like, I think it is maybe my favorite YouTube video. And this covers, again, timeline of the future. So it go, it, this is, again, based off our current understanding of everything from... Um, it starts in like 2019, actually, because that's when the movie was made, or the video was made. Um,
So here, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play this for you because you know copyright or whatever. But yeah, so starting in 2019, and what happens is basically every was it five seconds the speed doubles, and so you end up with a lot of stuff happening. And yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, I'm not gonna spoil it because I want you to watch this video. Watch this video; it's really, really good. Um, and you can answer the rapid question and probably have a bit of an existential crisis because that's what this video does to you. So yeah, good stuff. Um, so watch this video. Um, answer the rapid question. And you'll see what, again, based on current knowledge, we think will happen to the universe. And, yeah. Um, that's that. And that's pretty much the end of this. So, Wednesday, we will be starting with review. Wednesday, I'm going to be reviewing um, Atomic Stuff and... Uh, waves, and then Thursday will be uh, electricity and astronomy stuff. And then Friday will be the final, which I have to make. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there you go. That's the end of this.